Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we've been going through these several weeks of talking about how you, we, the church, have one job, this is the fifth week, second to last week. Some people have commented how they've enjoyed some of the the pictures, the internet memes that I've put up here on the screen. Some of the confirmation kids said, you're going to do that more than one week? And I said, sure. So today we're doubling down just a little bit. You had one job. Maybe that was by design. Who knows? You had one job. The upside down door. You had one job. College of Architecture and Planning. The C is on the brick because their architecture and planning didn't get it right. You had one job. Head and shoulders. I don't know, that's just wrong, isn't it? But as we, as the church, think about our one job of bringing Christ to people, sharing the love of Jesus with people in both word and deed, the question for us today is, do you and I have the passion that God desires to carry his word to others so that they would receive that word with joy? Do you and I have the passion to introduce people to Jesus, to draw them one step closer to Him, so that as we do so, we are passionately, daily, and consistently seeking to be disciples who make disciples? It is our one job. And for us, as we consider this today, we take a look at the Apostle Paul a unique individual to be sure. As he preaches the gospel, as he is an evangelist, as he goes from place to place establishing churches, and as he writes many letters that we have in the New Testament that draw people into a deeper and deeper relationship with Jesus. And St. Paul writes here in his first letter to the Corinthians, He says, you know, when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast since I'm compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And as Paul goes on to speak about his passion for sharing Jesus with people, the man is an absolute fanatic. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew. To win the Jews, to those under the law, I became like one under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all means possible, I might save some. I have done all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. So as St. Paul talks about this, he speaks to the extent that he would go to share the gospel. Nothing would stop him. Nothing that is godly and nothing that is good. He will cross any bound so as to bring the good news of Jesus with others. Have you ever known somebody like that? where in their heart they were so passionate about the relationship that they had with Jesus that they felt as if wherever they went, they had to find a way to connect with people and connect people to Him. St. Paul was an absolute fanatic. If he were a football fan, he'd either be wearing eagle's wings today or be dressed in red, white, and blue, and bleed the red of a patriot. He is an absolute fanatic. You know, there's someone in our congregation who is a retired police officer, and other police officers still see him as he goes and works out, and they said, he is a maniac when he's on that bike. And then they say, you know what he listens to? Slow jazz. While he's riding that bike with everything that he had. In fact, St. Paul even uses that imagery of working as hard as you can as he uses 
the Olympics. I do not run aimlessly so that I would somehow miss the prize. I run with everything that I have. Are you like St. Paul? He's a unique individual, isn't he? With a unique calling to be an apostle of the Lord. I'm not an apostle. You're not an apostle. What is God's calling to us? No matter what our vocation, no matter what our station in life, Jesus still has given us the charge of being those who share the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God that is drawn near in Jesus, who has bridged the gulf between heaven and earth so that we would be his people. And as we hear what Paul says, you know, the theme may be identify the lost for today's message, but really the theme for Paul was identify with the lost. Identify with the lost. Now let me think with you for this about a, for a second or two. How would you and I identify with people so as to share the gospel with them? In our day and age, it probably involves spending time with them, getting to know them, not having an agenda so that in getting to know them, it's not genuine. It's not like that. It's not like, boy, I got a score here, and so I'm listening to them so that I can win. It's more God has poured his love, his compassion, his heart into us, his love which seeks to connect with all people such that we want to connect with people and just learn who they are in a fragmented world, in a world where our connection with people is maybe compromised by things in our world and society where we have these interactions online but not in person, where we seem to be in a hurry all the time and don't have time to make new friends. The challenge is there. And yet, God's calling to us, as Jesus gave to his disciples the commission to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. He gives us the charge to connect with people of all different walks, who are like us or who are not like us, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of sharing the great news of his son, Jesus Christ. I've got a place in my life where it's tough for me to get out of my comfort zone. I have enough trouble pronouncing words in English. I have trouble even more so trying to say words in Spanish. And I live in an area of the country that is surrounded by people who speak Spanish, and I am always hesitant to try and get to know their name because I know I'm going to mess it up. But sometimes, perhaps, the key thing to do is just try. It's the step of getting to know somebody. There are times when I am so nervous about getting names right. Here's something that I would do in confirmation class years ago when I would have one generation of, one, one group of kids who have gone through and their siblings are now going through. I would purposefully mess up the name of the sibling so that when I do it unconsciously, nobody would know. It's kind of like when I say to my family, I make corny jokes so that someday when I've lost my mind, you won't be too sure and I won't be put away. <laughs> my point is this. Getting to know people really can take us out of our comfort zone. Maybe it's even the people that we're associated with that already know us somewhat Getting to know them on a deeper level 
identifying with them in whatever challenges that they may be going through and whatever joys in life they may have can be a step in building a bridge for the gospel to share the greatest news, that news of Jesus Christ. God did not call us to be in a comfort zone. He called us to be his people, to be his witnesses, to be those who through repentance and forgiveness of sins live out our lives as a new creation. And as a part of that new creation, we have a tremendous unending love for those that God has loved. And that would be everyone. I don't want to downplay this. It is simple, and yet it is challenging for us at the same time. In fact, I'd say, humanly speaking, for us to be able to carry on this work of God, doing our one job as the church, it would probably, if it depended on us, be darn near impossible. And what do you do when you have an impossibility? Well, look to Jesus. What did he do with this impossible task of taking on the sins of the world and connecting with every single person in the community who had come to him with illnesses, with demon possession? What's he do after a long, hard days of work, day of work? Does he sleep in the next day? Very early, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and he went to a solitary place and he prayed. When faced with an impossible task, one that does not depend entirely on us, we pray. Because in doing so, we let go of the things that we hold in our hands so that we might receive the gifts that God desires to supply us with. Just as in the Old Testament lesson today, it talked about how the Lord will lift us up on wings like eagles and renew our strength. So also our Lord strengthens us for the task of sharing the message of his love with others. I love this quote from St. Francis of Assisi. In every circumstance, share the gospel. If necessary, use words. However, I want to take this step today to say it's necessary to use words to help people connect the dots. When we serve and we love as Christ has served and loved, people need to know the why, the what, what drives us, the who, who loves them more than they could ever imagine. Sometimes we call this a gospel imperative. It is something that we do, not because it is necessary for our salvation, but because it is necessary to fulfill our calling for the sake of the gospel. And we never forget the sake, the, the means by which Jesus would go, how far he would go in order to make us his own. Not even heaven and earth could stand in his way. Not even sin or death or the power of the evil one could deter him from taking our place on the cross, dying and rising again in power again, so that as the people of God, we would live in that power. Jesus did that for you and for me, so that we would be his own forever. But he did that also for all the world. This is not just good news. It is the best news. And with joy we receive it. With peace we know that we are reconciled to God through Christ. And with his power we share that message of his love so that many, many would come to know the God who loves them more than any ever could. In Jesus' name, amen.